report is detailing the Ku Klux Klan's presence on the UW-Madison campus back in the early 1920s. And now the university is proposing a few changes. Madeline O'Neill is in our new center to tell us more, Maddie. Eric and Susan, Chancellor Rebecca Blank is announcing four proposals after the study she commissioned last fall reviewing the KKK's history at UW. Then, in the wake of violence in Charlottesville surrounding Confederate monuments controversy, she wanted to look into ways to appropriately respond to the university's history. This is an uncomfortable history. University of Wisconsin-Madison photos like this can make campus look like a different world. The campus culture of that time was one of pervasive racial and religious bigotry. Evidence of groups calling themselves the Ku Klux Klan didn't make many in the 1920s so much as blink. The campus has never really reckoned with that history or, or where its legacies are today. Until now, Dr. Stephen Kantrowitz is a co-chair of the study group looking into this history. It is not comfortable reading nor should it be. The group's new report details two student-run organizations taking the KKK name that were broadly accepted from 1919 to 1926. One affiliated with the national organization and the other out of a fraternity with many well-known student leaders, including actor Frederick March and Porter Butts, the first director of the Wisconsin Union. Both still have spaces there named in their honor. As we got deeper into the history, our uh, our conversation shifted away from the question of names and toward the question of the culture of the campus. And as we did that, we realized that to, to focus on the names would be to suggest that we could solve this problem by scrubbing away uncomfortable reminders. Instead, the study group is suggesting a campus history project giving voice to underrepresented groups who have experienced prejudice. Victims have no voice. Victims do not control the narrative. So, as proposed, to recover these accounts, these voices, is of great significance. And increasing efforts to improve diversity and inclusion on campus. One wants to think forward to the next 50 to 100 years to say, what will they look back and hold us responsible for? And that is truly a motivation to say we need to keep working on being a better place and a better community. Unless we acknowledge that, that this wasn't a welcoming place, and that for some people it might still not be, uh, we're never going to get to the campus that we want to be. The chan chancellor's proposals include $1 million toward a public history project, giving voices to those who have faced prejudice on campus, funding for new ethnic studies faculty members, and increasing resources to recruiting scholars from underrepresented groups and investing in opportunities for them. Madeline O'Neill in the newsroom. Thanks, Maddie. The biggest